What's up guys? Welcome back to part three of this classic class of 1974 Honda XL70 project we've got going on here. It's been a little while since we've uh, we've seen each other. There's been a lot going on, had a lot of parts to get ordered, a lot of stuff coming in. Um, so as we kick off this, this video, I want to share a little something with you real quick. All right, I told you on the last video that I had a pile of parts on order for this thing, and well, here's that pile. Uh, clearly keeping Honda or, or somebody in business here with this project. Um, just a reminder, you know, we're trying to get in on this for a, under $1,000 or under, complete, done. All right, so as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, I'm going to check my work order. I have the work order. I should probably grab it so I don't misquote. So Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share the, I guess the, the funnest part I had here was the changing of the rear tire. Uh, bear with me on the, on the upcoming video. We're going to go back in time here a little bit and uh, let you share in some of the pain. When I tell you, you didn't want any part of this, trust me, you did not want any part of removing a 40 year old tire. As you can see, there's a few tools that had to go into the equation here, but it's about to come off. All right, guys, we, we got this new tire on here. It wasn't without a fight, but she's on there. And if you zoom in, you can even see the hairy nubs. Oh, it's got a brand new front tire on it. If you t zoom in, you can see the hairy nubs on it. Uh, nice beefy trial tire on it. Hooks up, handles great. Also, uh, considering the previous condition of the rim, it didn't clean up too bad. Far from perfect, uh, but it is structurally solid, so we're gonna roll with it. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and give a quick walkthrough on reassembling the sprocket and the, the brake panel and everything real quick and get that set. Okay, uh, got everything kind of laid out here. Um, we're not going to go through the actual assembly process, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it real quick and just show you what pieces are which. Um, I've already assembled the new brakes on the brake panel. Um, I like to put a little bit of grease on those pivot points because moisture does get in there and it, it just can't hurt. Uh, of course, here's our new sprocket. Um, this is the dust shield that goes behind the sprocket. We're going to be reusing that. Um, these are the, the dampeners. Sometimes you hear them called cush drive dampeners um, and then this is a snap ring that ultimately holds the sprocket to the rear wheel uh, these dampeners actually just drop down in these these slots here and then as you can see um, they slip right on these little nubs on the sprocket of course this has to go on first your dust cover but it, it's really straightforward um, and if you have any of these that are possibly broken or uh, are really loose fit in the rim you need to replace them luckily in this case these are in pretty darn good shape so we're just going to again reuse them so let me throw this together real quick all right it's magic just like that brand new sprocket installed and brake panel reinstalled with new brake shoes so this is ready to go back on the bike I'm glad that's over with um moving right along um, we did do quite a bit of work on the frame once we had her tore down. Um, apologize for my assistant here. Um, having a little trouble keeping his, keeping his composure. He's been working on this thing too, so he's, he's kind of anxious to see it done. Um, anyway, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and show you kind of what this, what this frame looked like uh, up close uh, before we really jumped in and, and got, got to work on it. All right, you can see even after the rust removal uh, process we went through with that gel I showed you earlier, this is still very, very crusty, and we can't have that. So we're gonna we're gonna do a, do a little thing or two to this. Um, just take you around here to the other side. You can see it doesn't get any better over here. And then you have the swing arm, which is equally bad, and it's been bubbed. See, at some point the uh, the chain tensioner prongs there must have come undone. So, of course, you know Bubba had to make an appearance here. Someone really, really did a number on that. So, I went ahead and 
I, I had no choice. I had to source another swing arm, so I picked one up off of eBay. There's our replacement. Um, as you can see, I've given it a Craigslist restoration. A little bit of and it's good as new. All right, now I'm gonna hop in the time machine and show you what she looks like now. Um, it's, it's basically ready to go. Check it out. This bike was basically given what we call a full rotisserie detailing, AKA frame off restoration. You call it whatever you want. And so the whole bike was given what we call a rotisserie detailing. Uh, that was eight hours, a full eight hours in the detail shop, so. But she is ready for the back half to be reassembled. Okay, last but not least, um, I'd like to get this thing back on its feet today. Um, wanted to get it riding, but we just ran into too many delays with parts and whatnot. So I'm gonna jump in here and we're gonna, we're gonna go through reassembling the rear swing arm, shocks, uh, rear wheel, and uh, see if, oh, Richard, are you tired? You ready to go? Richard says we're ready to go. So let me get you set up on the camera here, a little different angle, and we're gonna jump right in. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, we're all set up to put this back together. Uh, real quick, I just wanna <clears throat> share a couple things with you. I had to, had to source a few parts um, that I haven't talked about already. Um, chain guard was missing, um, so I picked this one up off of a, a guy on Facebook. Um, I, obviously, I had to had to give it a rotisserie detailing, but uh, she's ready to go. Um, picked up another kickstand, got this off of eBay a while back. Uh, the one that was on here was uh, severely bent and the end was pretty much worn off. Um, and then this is your brake stay. It holds your brake panel from turning. Um, this is the original one, I just refinished it. Um, it's normally zinc plated. Cheated a little bit and I used some uh, zinc paint from Eastwood, pretty good stuff, but it's a little pricey. It almost gets you the finish you're looking for. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and, I don't think this is gonna take very long. Um, there's really not a whole lot to do uh, to get to where we wanna be today. But we'll start out with the swing arm. Um, it's worth noting when you put the bolt in for the swing arm, you wanna put it in from this side and bring it this way. Um, reason being is the uh, chain guard, uh, attaches to that as well. So you've got to be able to slip the chain guard over the end of that bolt and then put your nut and washer on. So I also like to uh, coat these with a little bit of grease um, when you put them in there for obvious reasons. So let me get that in. Should go fairly easy. All right, there we go. Okay. So today, um, I'm actually not going to um, put this nut on the other side simply because I'm not ready to put the chain guard on. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, pop this up on the table. Uh, I think it'd be easiest to put this rear wheel back on um, before we put the shocks on. That way we're not fighting, keeping it up in the air. Um, a few things when you put this back together, um, you, you got your chain tensioner. So first thing you do is you're gonna put that on the one side of the bolt. That's essentially your washer as well. Um, and again, a little grease on that. There's two axle spacers that go on the rear here. Um, you got a, a larger one and a smaller one. And it, it's, it's kind of hard to screw up, but you can. Um, the larger one goes on the sprocket side and the smaller one goes on the brake side. This can be a bit of a balancing act sometimes, getting these in there. We'll see how this goes. Can't complain too much about that. It went in pretty easy. All right. A 
looks like this swing arm might be might be opened up a little bit more than she needs to be on the back end here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take you off camera real quick and make some adjustments. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, one quick cor correction I owe you on the spacers. Uh, I guess since I was kind of looking at it backwards, I gave you some bad information. The longer spacer goes on the brake side, the shorter spacer goes on the sprocket side. But I did figure out why the uh, swing arm seemed to be spread out too far. It wasn't, of course. Uh, Bubba, Bubba got me. Um, bike came with this axle bolt. I didn't think anything of it. It was half put together when I got it. I just pulled it out, cleaned it up, and went to reuse it. Well, turns out Bubba done pulled something off the tractor or something stuck in there, because that ain't an axle bolt for a Honda. Uh, it's too short. Luckily, I had some in my stash, so um, I'm gonna head and clean one of them up real quick, and, and I got it in there. We're, we're back in business. Um, so I've got the axle in, I've got the chain tensioners on, um, last thing is the nut. This is a, a castle nut, that's what I call them. Got the little slots, so you can put a cotter pin in there to lock that down, keep it from coming loose. Uh, we're, I'm going to put that on there, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to tighten it up all the way, nor am I going to put a pin in it because we have yet to put the chain on, and we've got to do some some moving around of this wheel when that goes on. I'm just going to kind of cinch it up a little bit. You can just take a, There's a hole. Uh, in these stock axle bolts here. You just stick a punch or something in there to hold that and you tighten it. And your castle nut's a 17 millimeter. I'm just gonna get this to a point where it's not moving around. Okay, that ought to do it. So, on your chain tensioners, um, takes a, a 10 millimeter, I'm sorry, a six millimeter M6 flat washer, lock washer, and nut on each side. Um, I'm using, I've got brand new tensioners and hardware. Just gonna throw those on there so they're there. Just gonna kind of tighten those down and square up the back wheel, if nothing else, for now. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. All right. There's index marks on these tensioners and on the swing arm, so when you actually go to put your chain on and tension this, all you've got to do once you've got your chain tied is make sure that the index marks line up on both sides and you know you've got your back wheel squared up with the frame. I'm going to tighten this up just a bit more so she doesn't move around. That ought to do it. Yeah, I know this looks like it's loose and it is because I haven't tightened it up yet. So, remember I've got to put that chain guard on still. All right, um, still got to address the brake stay. Um, in the meantime, I think let's go ahead and put the shocks on. Um, you saw earlier, sourced some new shocks. Um, these are obviously aftermarket reproductions, but they're as close as you're gonna get to the original thing um, without finding new old stock or uh, taking the original shocks apart and getting them re-chromed, which in, ex in itself is about probably the price of three sets of these. Uh, plus a lot of the original shocks are bent anyway, so they're, they're really no good. And when you put these on here, I, I've got, again, you know me, I've got new hardware for everything. So um, there's, a, there's a certain thing that has to happen here. So this, these top studs um, for your shocks have a little shoulder on them. You've got to put a washer on the top, you put a washer on the inside as well. Um, because that's what's ultimately going to clamp down to your seat and hold it on there. So that top washer, the first one that goes on is an, an M12. And then on the outside of the shock, um, you've got an M10 and then your acorn nut. 
Um, so let, let me go ahead and put these on here. I don't think you need a class on how to bolt shocks on. All right. Starting to look pretty good. Um, you probably noticed uh, I did not tighten the top nuts all the way on the shocks. That was on purpose because we still need that loose when we go to put our seat on. Um, we'll be able to clamp our seat down behind the shocks. But uh, I think she's starting to look starting to look like something again, straight off the rotisserie. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? You want to help? You want a tool? Here. You don't know what to do with that. Okay, guys. Uh, my helper here says you need to hurry up and get that brake stay put together. So let me go, I'm going to take a quick pause here. I've got to sort out some, some tooling issues and whatnot, see what we need to put this on, and I'll, I'll go through the process of putting that together. Be right back. All right, we're back. Um, go ahead and get this brake stay put in. Uh, a couple things worth noting. Uh, there's special bolts, again, as usual. Um, this is your bolt for the rear. This is the bolt for the front, and if you look closely, I have little shoulders on them that's so that bar can pivot and rotate as the suspension and whatnot moves and as the brakes get adjusted over time and whatnot. So um, if you don't have these bolts, you need to get them because it's not going to work correctly if you don't, like I always say. Um, there's also on this bar, there's a, there's a little stamping on there that says F for front. Uh, I, I don't know if it matters or not, but looks to be the same both directions, but I put it in there that way anyway. So I've already got it in place up here. I noticed this bolt, bolt's going in a little tight. That's fine, um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this put in there. There's a little t tab, um, you probably can't see it, on this mount where the side of the one of the flats on the bolt will come up against and keep it from turning. Um, what I'm going to do is to get this in all the way, I'm going to persuaded a little bit. Um, this is a brass hammer, uh, which is important to note, it will not mar up the head of your bolt because the brass is obviously softer than that bolt. I'm just going to get that tapped in. There we go. Didn't leave a mark. Okay. Um, just like this bolt, if you can see, there's a hole in there for a pin. Um, this has got the same scenario going on. Um, apparently, I only, I only ordered one of these pins, so uh, I'll have to get another one on order and pop that in there or maybe source a, a cotter pin or something. But uh, let me get that tightened up real quick like. Got that. All right, for the rear, um, well, this bolt actually goes in from the back side of the brake panel, and there's actually a recess in there where the head of that bolt drops right in, so you don't have to worry about holding it and keeping it from turning. Uh, just slips right in there, and then, you know, against all of my intuition, for some reason, the book says that the, the lock washer goes on first, then your flat washer, and then your nut. And that's that. Drop the pin in. Maybe. Just a little bit more. That doesn't want to cooperate much. I'll take care of that off camera. You get the point. Um, you've got to put those pins in there because this isn't technically really cinched down. It has a little bit of play in it, and I'm, obviously that's probably what the point of the pin is. Um, so with that being said, uh, the next step would be to uh, reinstall the brake pedal. I took that off to clean it up. Um, also purchased a new brake rod and all the hardware that connects back here. Uh, the one that was on it was extremely rusty, and normally I would clean it up and refurbish it, but it was so rusty that the threads were trashed on the back end where you have to tighten it. So 
Um, I think that's probably a good stopping point uh, for this video. Next video we can uh, get in a little bit deeper. So let me get this, uh, this mess I made here cleaned up real quick and we'll, we'll chat soon. All right guys, I guess that's gonna about do it for this one. Um, hopefully on the next one we get to take it for a little ride. We'll see how that works out with time and parts and whatnot and any other unforeseen issues we might run into. Um, also, still looking for a used muffler. If someone out there may have one, drop me a note or comment and uh, I'd be happy to buy it from you if it's something that I can probably get away with a little bit of Craigslist rebuild action. Um, so. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one, part four.